Okay. So if you turn around and see our sign, so just looking at our sign, so I just pull one of the triggers on the back. Okay. Oh, wow. Now you are in Osama bin Laden's compound in Abbottabad in 2nd of May 2012. Oh my goodness. And if you pull the trigger again, you're going to go into night vision. Oh, jeez, look at that. So you feel, feel free like to. Call of Duty this is amazing. <laughs> What, what uh, VR program are we in? This is in Unreal 4. Yeah, okay. And you can move around a bit as well, feel free. That's a look around. So this is actually Osama bin Laden's house. We, we built it from the original architectural drawings, so you are standing in exactly the dimensions <laughs> of his house. And these are real Navy SEALs that we mo-capped. Nice. So everything about this is 100% authentic. Uh, we have very uh, high-level Navy SEAL advisors on this Aww. project that were my advisors on, on Call of Duty when I worked on Call of Duty. So uh, thanks for showing me the VR. Now let's kind of jump over to motion capture with Donald Trump. Mr. Trump. Trump. Yeah. yeah, so explain how did you get hooked up with uh, doing the President Obama and then Trump? So. Uh, well, it's a very in interesting um, journey on that. Mm -hmm. um, so we were commissioned by Harry Shearer, um, he of the Voices of the Simpsons, to make Donald Trump and Barack Obama oh, wow. for um, a project that he was very interested in. He's a very forward-thinking guy who wanted to use motion capture to create a TV show. Okay. So we made that with Harry. I love and the Simpsons, that's amazing. Yeah, no, <laughs> Harry, Harry's amazing. Yeah. So, so he basically wanted to play Barack Obama and Donald Trump in the same scene. And oh. using this technology, you can. Uh -huh. So um, that was pretty cool. So we, we made the Oval Office and we made the avatars. And so we made that for Harry um, mm -hmm. and we're developing that as a TV show. So that's one of the, again, I mean, it's interesting that it, that's for 2D. It's just for, make, you know, using a 3D pipeline to create a 2D TV show. So it's one of the things we're trying to push is that, you know, just because we're working in immersive 3D worlds, let's not forget yeah. 2D. A lot of people like what, looking at stuff in 2D on their screens mm -hmm. and you can completely use this pipeline to, you know, make that stuff. Yeah, I remember easy. you guys had the Trump thing at the Oval Office at uh, yeah. VR and a lot two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Paramount, yeah. So, so what happened with that? So mm -hmm. then we took those assets, we had Donald Trump, and, you know, we said, well, we, we can put this in 3D. So we put it into VR and we made um, Trump in VR, which was, uh, <laughs> which was we, we made last minute and it got a, it, was, it just so happened that Trump went and got himself elected. Yeah. So it suddenly became a bit of a thing, yeah. uh, this Donald Trump character in VR. And he just so happened to be the most photo real avatar in, that there was out there at the time. So, and it just happened to be Donald Trump. So um, a lot of what we do is sort of um, catching, catching what's happening around us and putting it to good use. We didn't set out specifically to make Donald Trump and then put him into VR, but it, it seemed to serve our pur purposes of getting a, a, the most photoreal human out there in a way that people wanted to uh, uh, look at or at least uh, comment on. It, yeah. you know, it, was, it, was, it was controversial, which is often a, a good thing when you're trying to get the message out there. So, so we made uh, Donald Trump for that. We went to VR on the lot, got us a lot of attention. Is that how you got hooked up with the Netflix people for Ultra Cover? Did they see you there or somewhere else? So they actually, it? so after yeah. we did the VR on the lot, mm -hmm. uh, two years ago now, yeah. um, we developed another piece of technology whereby you could actually track um, somebody's face that steps in front of a webcam like this one right here, mm -hmm. and it would track their face in real time, and then it would use that, that data in order to animate the avatar in real time. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we did a show at Sotheby's in New York last summer where we had our Donald Trump and Barack Obama avatars projected 15 feet high with these hugely powerful Barco projectors. And then in real time using Unreal 4 again, we, had, we were able to track anybody who stepped in front of these cameras to uh, track their face and then she, see those faces animated on the wall. And so that's what uh, Here Be Dragons who commissioned us to, to do the Netflix piece, that's what they saw and got them wowed and uh, it was perfect for the Netflix show Alter Carbon because they wanted um, an experience that really um, got people into understanding what the show is about and, and it's, the show is set in the future so it's very yeah. you know, forward thinking on the technology and this is obviously very cutting edge technology but in terms of the show it fit in very well with the theme of the show which was that in the future you'll be able to pick your own body, your own sleeve, as they called it in the show. Yeah, you just uh, insert your uh, memory disk. Uh, I forget the knowledge, the terms they call it. Anymore, yeah. but, so for, yeah. their, for their global marketing yeah. activation, this is a perfect you know, uh, fit for that piece yeah. of content because that's exactly what we do. We create photo real human avatars that you can see yourself as in real time, like a magic mirror. Yeah, I was at a consumer electronics show and they had those fake bodies that everyone was raving about. 
Um, so tell me through the pipeline of how it takes when they contact you and how fast you have to get it out because they had the show was coming out I think February 2nd yep. and you had to get this stuff done by what, the, uh, January or December? December actually because okay. this is part of that global marketing campaign. Uh, the first activation was in Sao Paulo, Brazil in December. Mm -hmm. So we were commissioned in the summertime. So we probably had about three months to put this together. Um, and we, at the time, it took us four to six weeks to make each character. That's quite wow. labor intensive. There's a lot of work goes into these characters. Um, and so we initially said, well, we think we can, we can get three done for sure in that time. And they came back and said, well, we want 10. <laughs> so we said, okay. Um, and the great thing is, you know, you get a budget to do something and the reason to do it, you can scale up. And we were able to make a bunch of efficiencies in our pipeline. So we were actually able to complete 10 avatars within that, that time which uh, for us was great. And also make the avatars, you know, even better than what uh, Trump and Obama were. So. Awesome, well, let's go check it out. So. Okay. All right. Cool, so this is one of the 10 that you can pick. So I know my Xbox Connect correctly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, so you... uh, quickly, what programs do you use to create? Um, is it Maya and? Yeah, uh... a, lot of, so a lot of the programs that we use are uh, regular industry programs, uh, off-the-shelf stuff. Um, Maya, um, it's all in Unreal, Unreal 4. Um, it's, you know, and that's the thing, it, it's, you know, the, the, the software and the hardware is off-the-shelf, and that, that's kind of important for Netflix when you're doing global activation in that, you know, you can put this together on a, on a reasonable budget. You know, you're not building purpose-built hardware or, you know, writing new software. Um, but I think our skill as a company is taking that software and combining it uh, to get very, very good results. Um, and we also have a very great team. So each of our artists, uh, you know, we're very, very hot on working with good artists yeah. because um, it's really, you know, I like, I like what we do to um, making a Swiss watch. You know, it's a very, very refined process and every single element is very, very important to getting the results that, that, that we get. How big is your team? Like, I mean. Uh, do you we, have like a certain team on full staff or do you just have like a freelance that comes in for each project? Yeah, you know? well, there's a core team of four of us um, mm -hmm. and we're all, let's say, been veterans of um, visual effects yeah. or movies or video games. And then we have a sort of an extended team of, of cousins that we work with a lot. Um, there's a team in Barcelona that we work with a lot. Um, nice. And there's, you know, we, it's the way we like to work is actually um, we have a virtual pipeline. So we can be working 24 seven around the clock. Um, we have artists all over the world and we're able to get the best talent because not always, you know, the best talent is in LA. It's some very fantastic, talented people in LA, but uh, yeah. you know, there's a whole big world out there of people using, of artists using the software in very, very creative ways that we like to bring on board. That's what I love is day and age because you don't have to be in the same room to work. I mean, everyone's got people all around the world that can yeah. do this. So, yeah. so I want to go back to your journey because, uh, you know, growing up, what were, you, what were your passion into this? How did you create into this field, you know? Oh, I was a movie kid. I mean, I was just obsessed with movies when I was a kid. I mean, that was the thing. I was a you know, Spielberg, Luke, Lucas kid. You know, I saw Star yeah. Wars when I was, you know, very, very small, like everybody else did. And, and I thought, well, that's it. That's what we want to do. Um, I ended up um, as a teenager going to uh, um, um, film school, went to a college called Goldsmiths College. I was in the same year as Steve McQueen, the Oscar winning, oh, wow. Oscar winning uh, director and writer of um, 12 Years a Slave. So uh, that was some time ago, and then I sort of eventually made my way to LA. I got a scholarship to go to UCLA to do the famous uh, MFA screenwriting program. Yeah, that's and the my, one. <laughs> my screenwriting career kind of took off after that. I ended up winning the Nicole, which is the biggest screenwriting competition mm -hmm. in the world, run for the Academy. And then that script was optioned by Zoe Saldana of Star Trek, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Avatar yeah. fame. And she was going to uh, produce and star in it. And then the um, it, execs at Activision read that script. Uh, it was a script that was set in the Iraq war about private security contractors. And they thought, well, this guy knows how to write war. So they hired me to write Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Um, that's the one of the That's with Kevin Spacey. That's the one with Kevin yeah. Spacey, correct? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was- Exosuits, if I remember correctly. Yep, exactly. Yeah. That was the whole big deal of the story. Yeah. 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 So and then at, while you're working at Activision, uh, you meet your well, now business partner, yeah. and uh, what made you guys want to start your own business together? You know? Well, Remington's amazing. He's a real genius. He's, he's, he's very well respected in the industry. His career in visual effects goes back 25, 30 years. He actually started out at a company called Acclaim in the early 90s and developed 
the early motion capture technology that we're using now as standard. And yeah, he worked on uh, I think it's, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, Spider-Man 2, doing motion capture for that. Yeah, Remington has been performance, performance director, performance capture director on Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, but you know, he uh, helped create Gollum for Peter Jackson for the Twin Towers. Um, he worked on Watchmen, Spider-Man 2. So he's been, he's been very central to, to uh, a lot of uh, uh, the ways in which this technology gets advanced. Uh, he's been there, and I worked with him on Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. And I, that was my introduction to a lot of you know, photo real CG worlds. Remington obviously has spent his whole career working in that, and I really wanted, I really thought, well, this could this, take this back to Hollywood and uh, do something very interesting in, in VR with it. I love this. Uh, what events are coming up that, because I mean, people probably want to experience this yeah. in person. Uh, it's like VR on the lot, uh, VR LA, E3 or anything that people can come out and try out. Yeah, we are probably going to be at VR, VR LA this year. Mm -hmm. um, E3, I can't say too much about it, but we might, we're, we're partnering with one of the big computer companies. And so we're probably going to be involved in one of the big keynotes at E3 this year. Um, trying to think where else you can see it. Um, you can always look at our stuff on the website, the mckinnascott.com, yeah. we're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And uh, we're here at Upload VR every now and again as well, demoing. So. Yeah, I love coming here and demoing stuff too. So um, plug the website. So uh, I guess there's any projects you're allowed to talk about or should we just keep in touch <laughs> with the website? You know? uh, we've got some very, very exciting, interesting things coming down the pipeline and I wish I could talk to you about them. Um, as you know, uh, yeah. these things get a secret and then they sort of come out like, wow, that's really crazy and amazing. So um, hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll be able to talk more about at least one of the projects I was telling you about. Uh -huh. um, but you'll be seeing our work coming down the pipeline pretty soon. <laughs> I'm trying out the girl now. <laughs> and I, well, thank I, you so much. This has been the coolest interview. I've got the interview while wearing the VR and doing motion capture. So this is a, a first for me. So very thank cool. you so much. That's what we're about, the first. Yeah. <laughs>